In today's class, we are going to discuss about one of the most important topic of the neuroanatomy series, which is the cerebrum. The cerebrum is the largest part of the brain where it occupies anterior as well as middle cranial fossae and also supratentorial part of the posterior cranial fossa. So as we see in this image, the two cerebral hemispheres are divided in the mid sagittal plane by interhemispheric fissure. Together they fill almost entire volume of the cranial cavity. So this interhemispheric fissure is also known as the medial longitudinal fissure and this fissure is a deep groove within the midline separating both the cerebral hemispheres and containing the fax cerebri. Being a fissure, it also contain cerebrospinal fluid as well as some of the midline branches of the anterior cerebral artery and the posterior cerebral artery. So the two hemispheres are connected to each other in the midline by an important bundle of white matter called as corpus callosum. So here each hemisphere contains a cavity which is called as the lateral ventricle which contain the cerebrospinal fluid. Now let us concentrate on the gross anatomy. If you see the medial surface of each of the cerebral hemispheres over here, the medial surface is flattened and the inferior surface is extremely irregular and even it is slightly concave. So the concavity is predominant more anteriorly when compared to that of the posterior aspect of the cerebrum. But while the lateral surface where we can see here, the lateral surface is convex. So they are all lined by the cerebral cortex. So the surface of the cerebral hemisphere is divided by grooves called sulci and into ridges called as gyri. Now let us talk about the division of the cerebral hemisphere according to the lobes. So each of the cerebral hemisphere is divided into four lobes of unequal size. Out of this frontal lobe which occupies the greater percent of the neocortical volume which occupies approximately 41 percent of the total cerebrum. Second comes to the temporal lobe which is 22 percent the parietal lobe which is 19 percent and occipital lobe occupies 18 percent of the cerebral volume. In addition to these four lobes, some of the authors also refer to an insular cortex as the insular lobe as well as the cingulate gyrus with hippocampus as the limbic lobe. And as we already studied, that the corpus callosum connects the right as well as left cerebral hemispheres and they are covered by the meninges. Now let us talk about relations. If we talk about the medial relations first, medially we have a structure called as fac cerebri and also we have the contralateral cerebral hemisphere. But where if you see inferiorly, we have the anterior cranial fossa, middle cranial fossa as well as we have a tentorium cerebelli which is a tent like structure. Now let us talk about the external features of the cerebrum. Each of the cerebral hemisphere has three surfaces, four borders three poles and it is divided into four lobes. Now we have to discuss all these in detail. What are the three surfaces of the cerebrum? The first one is the 
superolateral surface. So, this superolateral surface what we are seeing here, the superolateral surface is convex in nature and whereas the medial surface which is flat and it is vertical completely and if you see the inferior surface here, the inferior surface is irregular and it is divided into an anterior part which is called as orbital surface and posterior part which is called as the tentorial surface. So, these are the surfaces of the cerebrum and next is about the borders. How many borders are present? There are totally four borders, superior, infralateral, medial, right? That is medial orbital and medial occipital. So, the superior border here separates the supralateral surface mainly from the medial surface, whereas the infralateral border separates the supralateral surface from the inferior surface. When we talk about the medial border, that is the medial orbital border separates the medial surface from the orbital surface. In the same way, the medial occipital border separates the medial surface with the tentorial surface. So, these are the borders of the cerebrum. Next is about poles. So, when we talk about poles, first one let me talk about the frontal pole. The frontal pole is called as anterior end and the occipital pole is called as the posterior end and the temporal is anterior end of the temporal lobe, right. So, these are the poles of the cerebrum. And we already discussed about the lobes, there are totally four lobes. These are frontal, parietal, occipital, temporal, right. Totally we have four lobes in the cerebrum. This is the classical presentation about the cerebrum. 